bonding in metals. We mentioned this earlier, but we'll talk a little bit more about this. Metals have low ionization energies, meaning it doesn't take much energy to pull an electron off and make a cation. So in a metallic solid, each of the metal ions is donating one or more electrons to this pool or sea of electrons. So we can think of um, sodium metal as being an array of sodium ions surrounded by a sea of electrons that are negatively charged. And what holds this all together is the attraction between the cations and the negative electrons that are just kind of running around. So in, in Mrs. K's chemistry land, this is a neighborhood where the sodium ions are the individual houses, and each house in this particular neighborhood has sent one little boy, one little electron out to play. And those little boys are just roaming all over the neighborhood. And because their kids are all out there playing together, that bonds the families together, and they kind of watch out for each other. This model explains why metals conduct electricity. Electricity is the flow of electrons. In this model, we see that those electrons that are just sort of pooling around the ions are free to move. They're not stuck on a particular atom. Most of the electrons are stuck on a particular atom, but a few of them have been sent out to play and they can roam all over the place. So that explains conductivity. It also explains malleability and ductility. So when you hit a metal with something hard, it doesn't shatter, does it? It dents, right? And if you keep banging away at it, you're just going to deform it. Eventually, you could flatten it out. That's malleability. Ductility means you can draw it into a wire. The reason you can do that with metals is because the, the attractive forces that are holding the atoms together are not directional. And so if you hit this and you deform it a little, it doesn't really matter. That just get pushed out of the way. It's like, yeah, we're still good. We got this sea of electrons that we're still attracted to. We're going to all stay together. So it's non-directional. So it can be deformed and not have an issue. That doesn't work with an ionic compound where you have directional interactions between, in sodium chloride, you've got the sodium and the chloride and the sodium and the chloride in this direction, and in all three directions. And if you move one of those chloride ions a little bit, it breaks the attraction. And so ionic compounds tend to break along straight planes. They tend to shatter more than they do bend. So any questions about the electron C? Let's talk for a minute about ozone. Ozone is important um, for our planet. Um, oxygen has a double bond, and ozone, O3, has resonance structures, so it has bonds that are between single and double bonds. So let's just draw those Lewis structures. So this is a, has a resonance structure, and um, so we could represent it as the oxygens having like one and a half bonds with each other. The bonds are equivalent. So the bonds in ozone are weaker than the bonds in oxygen. So the reason that the ozone layer is important is that it protects us from a lot of the ultraviolet radiation that's coming from the sun. So as UV light hits this ozone layer, that is energy, right? Light energy can break bonds, provided that the you know bond energy is similar to the energy of the UV light. So the UV light is not strong enough to break 
this bond in oxygen, but it is strong enough to break the bond in O3, in ozone. So light comes in, breaks this, breaks the ozone, and you end up with O2 and kind of an orphan, an oxygen atom, which the oxygen atom is not at all happy about this. And so what happens is then the oxygen combines with, I'm sorry, the oxygen atom combines with an oxygen molecule and reforms the ozone. But in doing so, it has absorbed that energy instead of letting it pass through and give us worse sunburns than we would already get. Any questions? Whoops. I guess that's it.